Before drawing any lines on our map, we must decide on a publication scale. In this video, we will choose a publication scale for our map. We will set up our digitization scale and we will draw in the map border. Fractional map scales, like the one always shown in the bottom left of your map view, are a ratio between the distance on a map and the actual distance on the ground. You can adjust map scale and arc by clicking on the drop down menu of the fractional scale or simply by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Depending on how big your mapping area is and how much geologic detail you are trying to convey, you may choose a large or small publication scale. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to select 1 to 50,000 as our publication scale. Because as you see on the screen, this map scale nicely encompasses our whole mapping area. Now we must determine our digitization scale. Digitization scale is what we use when drawing geologic contacts and other features. When geologic mapping, your digitization scale should be a minimum of four times larger than your publication scale. For example, if your publication scale is 1 to 100,000, that means your digitization scale must be 1 to 25,000. For our project, we chose 1 to 50,000 as our publication scale which means that our digitization scale will have to be 1 to 12,500. The reason for defining publication and digitization scale is so that our published maps are consistent, cross-comparable, and repeatable. When we put points, lines, and polygons on our map, we are sharing our objective geologic observations. In other words, another geologist could be given the same initial data set and come up with the same observations. They may choose to lump or split geologic units in a different way, and their interpretations may vary, but the data and the observations remain the same. Now I'll show you a nifty trick to customize your map view into only showing certain map scales. Right-click the fractional scale and click Customize. Now you'll see the Scale Properties window pop up with a list of scales. We can click and delete all since we won't be using many of these scales. First, let's add 1 to 50,000 for our publication scale, then 1 to 12,500 for our digitization scale. Additionally, I will put a 1 to 100,000 scale just for demonstration. Before clicking OK, be sure to check the box that says only display these scales when zooming. Now, when I use my scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in or out, it only displays these three map scales. This will be useful when we begin drawing geologic contacts and features, because we can always quickly zoom into our digitization scale. Plus, we can zoom out to get a bigger picture view of the mapping area. Finally, let's put our first lines on the map by drawing in the map border. To draw any feature, we must navigate to the Edit tab then click on the Create icon. This will bring up the Create Features pane on the right-hand side of the screen. Notice how our four mapping feature classes, along with their layer symbology, show up here. Map border is near the bottom. Click on the Line icon to begin drawing. Although the base maps are not perfectly rectangular, we will still draw a vertex at each corner of the map. Note how I zoom into the digitization scale when placing the vertices, then zoom out to navigate to the next corner. To get a perfect fit, we want to make sure that snapping is enabled. If it is off, the cursor won't automatically snap to the point. With snapping enabled, your mouse will automatically grab onto vertices or other line segments. This can be fully customized so that your mouse will only snap to the features you want it to. Double click on the last vertex to finish drawing the map border. Note how the map border appears light blue. This just means that it is the current selected feature. Whenever editing, you can click on features to select them. Once selected, you can delete them if you want to redraw you can change their attributes, you can move them, and you can edit them in many other ways. To stop a feature from being selected,
click on the clear icon in the ribbon up top. Now we see that the map border appears as a thick black line like we specified. Whenever you are editing and creating features, be sure to click Save Often. This button is for saving recent edits and newly created features. Also, be sure to frequently click the Save Project button at the top left of the screen. There is nothing more frustrating than losing work progress, especially intricately drawn geologic contacts. In the next video, we will discuss which base map to use and we will draw in our linear features.